So, I added a sun and a custom sky into my indie game and the graphics looks so much more better. With all the hard work, my sandbox survival game is starting to look very good, plus some additional color changes that I made towards the game in the shaders. So, the first thing I need to do in order to add a sky into my voxel game is figure out the geometry. Yes, different shapes play a huge factor in the appearance of the sky. Simple shapes like cubes, cones, and pyramids, and spears are common shapes that we can use. Plus, there's some really weird shapes like tetrahedrons and all the other stuff, but we won't add those into our game. Plus, it really depends on how much details we actually need for our game. We can add cool things like galaxies, stars, and a whole bunch of other things we can put in our sky, but we're just going to keep this simple. I was also thinking about using a cube as a skybox, but however, I then realized that it would cause these weird artifacts at the corners of the world, and it would be really hard to interpolate the colors. Plus, I didn't really want to go through all that pain trying to make sure the cube doesn't leak any artifacts, so I went with a different shape. My next option was to look at a spear, which would be a really good fit when it comes to adding details, but again, the spear has way too much vertices, and I don't really want to deal with all the different spear stuff. So I axed around like what every good programmer should do, and a user named Unattainable Melon suggested that I use a bipyramid, which is really good for interpolating sunsets. Now, what exactly is a bipyramid? So I googled it, and it turns out it's this shape, which actually looks pretty cool, and has a whole bunch of different types of it. This is a shape that actually would be useful because that way we can have a sky and a void just changing the colors when we do interpolation. Since the shape is very simple and easy to implement, all we have to do is use trigonometry. We can use those wonderful sine and cosine functions in trigonometry to help us generate our bipyramid. We pretty much loop through all the vertices and get a slip of the weird circle to place on our face. And there we go, that's all to it. Of course, it requires a basic understanding of the unit circle and trigonometry, but we won't get into that for our bipyramid. Sponsor of today's video is on how to build your own voxel engine. I will have a course below if you guys want to check it out. All right, moving on with the video. Next, I saw that my game was actually missing the sun towards the sky. So I decided to program that, which is actually very simple. And to be honest, this enhances the sky and it looks like a game to be in early alpha stage. It's also a good thing that my texture artist designed the sun because I'm not really a good pixel artist, but I probably need some practice and maybe I can make some programmers art. So in order for us to have a sun and to do daylight night cycle, we need to figure out a way to rotate the sun around the player to create the night effect and the day effect. We can use a quaternion and some matrices to rotate the sun precisely around the player, typically around the X axis to make it look like the sun is setting and rising. All right, so here's our sun. I'm gonna change the time to daytime. Right now it's really dark. All right, now you guys can be able to see something. And there's our sun rising up and it goes all the way around with the rotations that we just described and it was set and the sky and I believe the fog will also go down too as well. This is actually a nice sunset that we have in our voxel game. With this out of the way, I made some quick changes in how the data is rendered to our voxel game from the previous video of using vertex pooling, which I improved on that topic by adding two more models to our game. Additionally, I also made some more changes to the fog color when the sun goes down that the fog should basically fade out when the sun goes down during nighttime. And here's a shader code on how I did that. It's actually very easily and yeah, it actually has a pretty good effect. Plus, I also have plans of changing the color for different types and maybe different biomes, but we'll save that for a future video. So far, our game is actually looking pretty good with all the new features that we have planned. If you guys want to join our Discord server, I do have a link in the description. Have a good one, everyone.